Drive Ignition. This is Actars Reviews from anime to figures and beyond. Welcome to another episode of Actars Figure Reviews. I knew this day would come, but I never thought it would be that soon. Yes, I managed to get a hold of the Spirit Digivolving Magna Garurumon figure. As I said in the Spirit Digivolving Kaiser Greymon review, unlike the other Spirit Digivolving figures such as Agnimon and Vitramon, uh, which of course are Gunimon and Burning Greymon in the US dub, Magna Garurumon and Kaiser Greymon were never brought over to the States and remained a Japan-only release, making them exceedingly hard to come by nowadays. Now, moving on to the proper review, the box itself is nicely designed all around. You can see the main body in one window and the armor pieces in the other. There's a really nice gorgeous CG rendition of Magna Garurumon over by the bottom right hand corner. On the sides, first off, we have Magna Garurumon in human form with a short bio. And on the other side, we have Magna Garurumon in spirit form. Now, we never did get to see the spirit of Magna Garurumon in the show. Officially though, the spirits of light, darkness, Thunder, metal, and water are supposed to merge together to form a hyper spirit of light, and this is it. On the back of the box, we have an illustration showing off the transformation process of Magna Garudumon from spirit form to human form. The picture over here tells us that scanning the barcodes that are located underneath the spirit base with the Japanese version of the detector digivice will yield you Susanomon. And speaking of Susanomon, the Magna Garurumon figure can combine with the Kaiser Greymon figure to become Susanomon. Now that I have both figures in my possession, I can finally show this feature off, but that will be in another video. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to comment on regarding the packaging itself, so let's open this up and take a look at the contents inside. So, what do you get in this package? Well, we first have the main base body, a spirit base, a couple of stand pieces for Susanomon's weapon, two frame pieces that are required for the spirit form, and 23 separate armor pieces. The figure also comes packaged with two instruction sheets, one that details the transformation process of both the spirit and human forms of Magna Garudumon, and another that guides you through the merging process with Kaiser Greymon to form Susanomon. First up, let's take a look at Magna Garurumon's spirit form.
nothing really much for me to say here considering that it's a brick of crammed together armor parts just like the spirit forms of all the other Digimon. I have to give them credit though for attempting to make something out of it and honestly it does look pretty good as a display piece. Not to mention I really like the unorthodox design of the spirit mode while all the other spirit modes look like a scrunched up version of their human modes, Magna Garumon's spirit mode looks like looks more of like a weapon or plane by itself. I can't really say I hate it or anything, taking into account that it is a bonus mode, completely unnecessary but a nice addition regardless. As for the spirit base, here are the barcodes on the bottom. Also note the striking gold paint applications that are not present on the US versions of this base. Before taking a look at Magna Garurumon's human form, let's check out the articulation of the base body. The head can rotate side to side all the way around. There is an inner neck joint that's on a ball joint. The arms can move forwards and backwards, in and out. It can actually rotate at the shoulder. The elbows are double jointed. The hands can open and close and the wrists do rotate. We do have a waist joint that affords 360 degrees of rotation. The legs can move forwards and backwards and in and out to a certain extent. The knees can bend at a 90 degree angle and the feet can move side to side. It's decent articulation for a toy made in the early 2000s. The only thing that I wished could have been included would be a swiveling thigh joint as it would really have helped with the possibility. And now that that's out of the way, it's time once again for Hyper Spirit Evolution. Garurumon sure lives up to his name. I mean, he is armed to the teeth. He has a gun on one arm, a giant cannon on the other, dual laser cannons on his chest armor, and not only that, he has a missiles on the tips of his wings. Features on this mode include individual removable missiles and folding wings. I have to say I really do like the aeroplane theme that Magna Garumon is sporting. Unfortunately, there is one flaw in this mode, is that its articulation is severely hindered. His arms can only go forwards about this far before his shoulder pads start to clash with his armor, causing them to fall apart. His cannon arm doesn't fare any better as his in and out movement is restricted as well. But Magna Garurumon does have a secondary mode. After using up all his ammo and suffering enough damage, he can cast off, uh, no, no common Rider capital joke intended, his armor. Simply pop his chest, back armor and two guns off. In this form, he regains his arm articulation, but unfortunately, he doesn't come with his Magna Blade, which is his primary weapon in this form. But since it isn't really featured that prominently in the series, I'll let it slide. In conclusion, Magna Garurumon is a great figure in its own right and it's really nice that the figure can also replicate its armed arm mode. While the articulation is limited, Magna Garurumon makes up for it in terms of appearance. As with Kaiser Greymon, I do highly recommend this figure for any fan of the Digimon Frontier series. However, due to its rarity, I can confidently say that only a hardcore fan will want to take the time and effort to track this guy down. Next up, Ancient Spirit Evolution. So, the Zacks are saying, see you guys in the next episode.